You are listening live to ACIM Gather, a gathering for a course in miracles, students and teachers. For more shows and information, visit acimgather.com. I am your lunch hour's host, Reverend Devin Devine, your conscious spirit coach in Cicerone to experiencing firsthand what is God. For more information about me and what I can do for you, visit openandclear.com. That's O P E N A N D. C-L-E-A-R dot com While each day may have a different subject and approach, ultimately each and every single one of them have the same lesson that God would have you learn to eventually open up and receive first-hand experience of what is truth, what is love, and what is that which is God. what spirit has in store for us today as we tune in to this spiritual lunch hour broadcasting live from Utah, USA. Oh, that's my cue. That's me. That's me. You're on, Devin. You're on. You're okay. Hello. <laughs> uh, hi. <laughs> Hello, America. Hello, Leanne. Hello, Carla. Hello, JJ, even though you haven't said anything yet. (laughs) Hello, everybody else that's being butterflies on the wall. Oh, I haven't said that in a while. Hello, Chris. Hello, Mark. I'm doing pretty good. (laughs) This blue's blending in. Hello, this is Reverend Devin Jesse Byrne. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So we are getting further in depth into Lesson 298, which, ooh, oh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I find it very, um, well, so easily misunderstood. I know. I love you, Father, and I love your Son. Even while it's absolutely true, and I don't know how many times I've seen it, said it countless times, But it's easily misunderstood, like love between two people. So we're going to get into the discussion a little bit further. And I do want to check if JJ is here. JJ, are you here? She was bugging me for the program to get started. I'm doing good. I think I was fast asleep before you broadcast last night. Oh, yeah. All good. It's late and... uh, Especially, you're an hour ahead, and like JJ's two hours ahead. That's pretty late, especially when it's what midnight here. So you already one o'clock when I get started for you. That's that's pretty intense. Oh, see, look, yeah. I'm starting to transcend. I'm starting to fade away, fading into the stars. Let's go ahead and get started. I had to wait for the kids to take a nap today, so that's why it's so late. We do have a, we're kind of late scheduled around here, all around. I thought we were moving. I thought we were starting to get a little earlier, but uh, (laughs) it doesn't help (laughs) when they start not taking naps and stuff. It's, It's a little... 
disjunctive around here sometimes. Okay. My chat box is dying on me. Hang on one second. Wrong button. There's the JJ. Yeah, well. This is what happens when JJ's caught up to me. She's she got to make sure that I'm on track, and now I can't. I can't take any more days off. I spent them all. I spent them all. All right. This thing's gonna die. So let's get moving. If you have any questions, feel free to type them in while we are here, and we can always get into them. Tag my it? What are you saying, Janet J? Oh, tag. You're it. I've got it. Got it. Jerk. (laughs) Oh, well, what happens when I turn off the sound? Here we go. Do you guys hear that buzzing? Or is that just me? Like when when I have nothing else. These are the perceptual interpretations of the lessons of A Course in Miracles. The recognition of interpretation through the stages and the processing of awakening. This is only part of a much larger intensive course. Learn more at openandclear.com So let's bring it back into the comprehension and the understanding that we talk about often here, that the whole, everything you're experiencing is essentially the love of God in the original aspect of all the universe, as it originally is, and even is still in this moment. So everything you're looking at, everything you're feeling, everything you're experiencing is actually the love of God, meaning God loves you, oh. but in the sense of in and through everything, ultimately giving you whatever experiences that you misunderstand, ah. <laughs> that you make something out of what is the love of God, that it is uh, considered uh, as many w- in, in the misunderstanding is that we think we've usurped the power of God or taken the power of God to create things and essentially developed ideas of ourselves being separate from it in itself. So it's a little tricky, but we, we, we realize that we have designed the world or developed and created a world apart from God, even taking about the knowledge of good and evil, in the sense of ha- having an experience of this and knowing that we're doing this, if I can make sense for a second here, by the power of God or by the love of God's existence. So in this way, every dimension, every physical expression, every uh, spiritual expression, every circumstance, all everywhere, all together, no matter what, you can't think of anything that's not in it. If you are seeing it, feeling it, experiencing it, tasting it, smelling it, pooping it, doesn't matter. It's all the love of God completely misunderstood so right here right now and if we just classify everything as simply as that this is actually the love of god misunderstood then of course we can get more specific we can get more direct in this understanding and then we can also see it in a different way that as god is simply loving the perspective of what 
I am as the Son of God, in between is all this, it's really just source, energy, like the power to bring about anything that you think of, anything that you believe, anything that you think or believe or, what's the other word, desire, that's it, to be your experience. And this source energy of what is God has absolutely no judgments whatsoever about making it into anything specific or anything. It just simply has in the same sense a, of a, a current that is motivating you to learn more, to be more, to understand more, to grasp more of what it is. So we're still on this journey attempting to understand what God is more. But that is what the love of God is. So if if I, yes, uh, could feel the love of God as it actually is, holy and complete, uh, I wouldn't be able to feel much. Um, in fact, I would be obliterated and I would have no feelers or essence in which I can feel something with anymore. That I wouldn't have any an association to what it actually is like I wouldn't even understand that it's love of God and in the same way I'll make it into something that it's not so then just like we're doing right now it goes right back into the misunderstanding and that's what A Course in Miracles is all about is the training to understand or the training to receive the fullness of the knowledge of the totality of all that is again and what is the totality of all that is? The love of God. One and the same with God. So I'm saying the love of God, I'm actually talking about in the same sense, hand in hand with the Holy Spiritual Universe. That you, everything you're experiencing and feeling and embracing or rejecting is all the experience of the spiritual universe. And that is what the love of God is. So to say, uh, in the factor of, um, to say I'm a body is a misunderstanding of the fact that I am love is actually referring to the, the spiritual body of the soul. That the entirety of the spiritual universe is all what is love. And that is the experience of love and the expression of love and pretty much any other word you can add in front of and behind love. You, in the, in the exact essence of what you are, is the perceiver and the experience of anything that you see yourself as or experience or believe yourself to be so you're not separate it's not like you're separate from that what i was just saying the spiritual universe as the love of god it's just simply a different aspect like it is the imagery of what you believe and what you think and so in the same sense when you are saying uh, you know, I'm I'm the love of God. You are unifying yourself, and with recognizing that there is no separation between it and I am, and there really is no difference between what is this spiritual universe and what I am, and there is no distinction really, in the sense of the factor of of a being love or it being anything else, and when you're actually in it, of course. Uh, you can see that love can look like anything. Love can, because it has no concern or worry or doubt or confusion about what you believe, it, it's really in the sense of it will show you what you believe regardless. So if you believe in hell, for an example, the love of God can and will look like hell. But this is strictly because it's communicating with you. It's still saying, hey, you love that? Okay, I love you. Oh, you love that? Oh, okay, I love you. You love that? Oh, I love you. And it's more so we don't recognize that by choosing what we desire, by choosing what we believe, by choosing what we think, we are developing, essentially asking what the universe is going to look like asking for what the universe is going to be for us, hand in hand. That it, it really is not separate at all. So this eternal essence of love in which God is, and joined as the imagery of it, constantly creating, creating or showing you 
in through all sensory perceptions of wow about what you believe so in, in, the only thing you have the decisions you really make are what you believe what you think and what you desire and it's only attempting to say this is beautiful i love you this is wonderful i love you this is good i love you and then we're over here you know thinking oh no i these things are bad and these things are good and we don't realize that we're making it out we're making the love of god into these things are bad and these things are good and so we're avoiding half of the love of god while we're embracing an other half of the love of god and essentially we'll never recognize the totality of the love of god because we're in resistance to most of it and we're embracing in in resistance that we don't have the other half and that we're trying to crave the other half and get it and and achieve it and so on and so we're actually unable to recognize reality as it actually is and even unable to be happy in the specific situation or even in general because we think there are different aspects to it we think we can go into one situation and out of it and then into another and out of that one into another and out of this one into another when all it is is that same one actuality of what the love of god is so it is definitely something that you have to stretch your paradigm and think a little differently and that's kind of the whole point of what we're doing here can you choose to recognize that there is actually the presence of the love of god in this scenario in this situation even in this pain possibly something we're going to get to again in just a moment Thanks for being here, and if I haven't said it yet, thanks for sharing this broadcast. Thanks for all the likes and following. It's very much appreciated. Or any other service, please feel free to contact me at openandclear.com and click the donate button at the bottom of the screen. interesting i have the chat open twice right now and, and jj the big thing popped open on one but it did not pop open on the other that's interesting i used to mistake love for laying on my back i'm assuming you're talking about sex i was uh, conditioned to correlate love and sex with love well, okay it's quite confusing of a mess of a message recognize the totality of God by not resisting anything I was under the belief that God was sex we think there are different different aspects yeah. sex and God are sim, sim, non, sim, it's, it's, The word eludes me. All of it is that some love actually of the love of God is. All that is that some love actually of the love of God is. Can you choose to recognize that there is a presence of the love of God in this scenario? Yes, that was, ukulele was in courtesy of Erica America. Thank you. And uh, hopefully I'll be making more. Um, if anybody has any music they want to volunteer. 
to be a part of my program, that'd be great. So I could say everybody follow Erica America, but not everybody's on Periscope. Questions? Like me to elaborate on anything? Drinking out of a bottle I don't want to sponsor. means. I just can't seem to say it. Synonymous. Synonymous. I'm sure you're spelling it right. As if it matters with me. Hey, Devin. Long time no see. Hope you're well. Mid. Hello. Hello. This is live, by the way, man. <laughs> Oh, you're sick today. What are you doing that for? Hopefully you're enjoying it. Carla, are you saying that you're not asking for what you see? Or experience? Oh, what do you mean, JJ? What do you mean? Hey, Carla, have you been listening to anything we've been talking about? is good. Or two. Why not? Or five. Who cares? <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and get started on our next part. this. You surely remember, remember me? Brandy's mom. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> hello, hello. It has been a long time. Yes. I've always wanted to ask you about her name. Just so happens to be three alcohols. And that's so we're about to have a discussion on a deeper discussion on 298 and the Course in Miracles. I have been listening. I'm not uh, I'm Pluto for heaven's sake. I'm not on Pluto. You sure? I'm just teasing you. I understand that some. Some things kind of just get pushed out of the, the way because they don't completely make sense and you're just grasping what you need to, and that's fine. But like I did, you did it for four months? Oh, took a break? Gotcha. And I'm on around 
about, we're asking him to clarify for you. Oh, I don't do roundabouts. I go straight through those things. <laughs> oh, you did ask questions. Oh, darn. So the big text didn't come in on my thing and it's already pushed away. I'm pretty sure you were just quoting me, right? I'm tempted to do my screen a different way so that I can see this. Isn't sex love? Oh. <laughs> you don't remember talking about this the other day? So essentially anything can be love and anything is love. It's more so in the fashion of how do you see it. And it's more so in how you see it than it is the actual situation or element or occurrence. It's actually not about the, the happening of any sort. It's more so that you are opening up to love or being love and expressing love. Yeah, the uh, ur text does, and I, like I told you, you're not going to be too satisfied with it. <laughs> it's just body crap. That's pretty much what it's saying, <laughs> and it has plenty about love. And it's more so, you you know, you can't interchange, uh, you know, sex as in physical impulses with this idea of love. Um, it's more so the the call for a miracle and you're misinterpreting it. Um, like when we're bodies, yes, it is, you know, really, like when we think we're bodies, the call for sex is absolutely there, right? But if we're not bodies, then what would that same sensation be? And if you think of it in that fashion, it kind of gets you thinking a little bit. And it kind of reveals how addicted we are to the physical ideas of it. But essentially, uh, in the sense of joining, in even as what you were calling uh, energetic exchange, uh, absolutely is happening in the same sense of even making love is more so in re reference to actually developing and making a baby than it is uh, <laughs> the actual physical impalement, should I say? <laughs> I'm just confused with sex and love, Devin and JJ. Yeah, it would come in time, and I don't necessarily think it's something that we're going to actually satisfy ourselves <laughs> in several ways uh, right now as far as discussing it. In no way is it excluded from everything else, which everything is included, in the totality of what love is. So love is where everything comes from, like everything's made out of. So if you think of everything as energy, the spiritual universe, all energy, right? That energy is what love is. Everything you associate yourself to be is part of this energy. You are love. Everything uh, you can imagine, everything is part of it, everything is in it, it is all in this love. You wearing, wearing the part that you are asking for the experiences? I don't know what you mean there, JJ. Or are you talking to Carla? All right, let's go ahead and hop into this. I suppose maybe the idea of sex might uh, come up in this, might not. Let's see what happens, huh?
the advanced teachings of A Course in Miracles. Unavailable to those who have yet to achieve what it has to offer. I didn't refuse. I'm not refusing to talk about anything. Yet they are offered here as they become available. It's like cooking and eating were not or are not different than sex. Yeah. Yeah, not different. Yeah, they're all the same. This is a part of a very intensive practice To learn more, learn more about what it has to offer, visit openandclear.com. So this is very lovely. This is very beautiful. Oh, love, 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 love. And as much as it was a very big thing in my mind. And recognizing that this, you know, it's like this idea of God, in this sense, it, it establishes a position that of something that you can love completely and actually love, uh, in opposed to like the world, where you have these ideas of loving someone, and then there's there's usually conditions or limits that you put on that love. In, in a specific fashion of how you associate or recognize and approve of what that love is about or where that love can be expressed and so on. Like if someone, like, like oh yeah, I love him or I love her, and then they do something like cheat on you, right? Uh, that unwritten rule uh, that uh, you don't agree with, which I'm not saying that you have to or anything, um, but uh, if you haven't discussed it, you know, and you haven't really gotten into it, and they go and sleep with someone else, and then you say you hate them or you don't love them anymore, it's kind of ridiculous because uh, they're the same person, and all of a sudden you don't hate them. It kind of means you actually didn't never really love them. In fact, you only loved an idea within a cookie cutter, little limitations idea, to a specific fashion that you say is them. I love the idea, this idea I have, I've placed on you. And if you go and do something outside of the little cookie cutter, maybe not, but little ideas, limit, uh, limitations that I have of this, and you go, oh, you go be with someone else, now I don't love you anymore because you did this, right? Because you did this. Instead of recognizing that love is something that is all-encompassing and it involves complete and full acceptance and allowance of everything that it has nothing to do with a specific idea or limitations whatsoever on or placed on anyone so in the actuality of saying that I love you but if you go do anything that I don't like then I don't love you anymore you don't actually love that person and it's the same thing as far as God is usually a pretty good little idea that we have our imaginary ideas or trying to understand and hopefully come to someday of what God is. And, and it's, it's something outside of limits. It's like I can love God no matter what. And until you get an idea that, oh, I can't love of God that uh, created evil things as well. Oh, no, I won't love that God. Oh, so we have to make that a different God. And then make this idea of God only love. And then I can only love love, of course. How can I do anything but love love? I mean, geez. But the devil over there, that's the evil half that, that we didn't create. And so let's make it into something else. I don't love that. And that, now I have a placement or a projection placement or area uh, that I refer to uh, and to place my hatred upon. I put my hatred there. I give that my hatred uh, instead of recognizing there is no difference to anything that is all that is. That to love one thing is to love all things. To love one thing completely is to love all things completely. Not any sort of separation idea. To hate one thing is to really hate all things. 
And to hate one thing completely is to hate all things completely. And so we need to adjust and, and kind of transform and transfigure this idea of what love is. And it's not something, you know, as much as it is a choice, it's not a choice of becoming. It's not a choice that it can be applied there. Like I can put love here and I can take it away. I can put love here and I can take it away. It's my love, my love. You can't have it, but you can. No, it's actually a presence of being. Uh, it's the presence of your being. And what you're actually doing to love someone completely is to recognize them as complete. And so it's not just conscious base, uh, it's all sensory perceptions. So sadly to say, anybody referring to in the world at all, as much as you want to say, and as much as I do even, and enjoy this idea of loving somebody, you cannot love somebody in particular, a special idea of a specific person at all, if you do not love everybody and everything all completely. It's, it's really that simple, but that's not simple at all. But in the sense of you can't actually love your partner, you can't actually love your kids without loving everything else. And even if it's just, now let's explain. <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's a, in that <clears throat> very moment, when you're loving them, when you're feeling that love, you're just like, it's, it's pouring out, like you feel that ripping out of your chest, and you're just like, oh, even this full bodiment of love, and you're just like, oh, I love them. I, the, honestly, does anything else exist in that moment? No, there is nothing else. But once you step out of that, once you think there is something else, essentially that feeling also steps out of your perceptual awareness. And so it can be recognized through what seems to be your symbols of specific people. But it's only a glimpse while you still think there are other people. It's actually the recognition of it, it doesn't care if you think it's a, a little person, a, a child, it doesn't care if you think it's an adult, it doesn't care if you think it's a, of the same gender or a different gender, it doesn't care if you think it's a god, it doesn't care if you think it's a dog, it doesn't care if you think it's a tree or a rock, God is there loving you. Do you recognize its love in return? And this aspect in the sense of saying, I, and I love your son, it may, you know, like, oh, yeah, the, the sun is separate from me, right? It's Jesus, or it's Krishna, or Allah. And, and as much as that's true, yes, it is, it is also you. And the actual embracing of what this, and really feeling what this love is, you are embracing and recognizing what you are. So in that moment, in that joining of, of love, with whatever being or non-being that you see and recognize God with, it requires that you also recognize that you are one with God. Or else you're not still complete recognition yet. So this is something that, this is really pretty intense uh, as far as can you love in part and love completely at the same time? And that is essentially no, you cannot be aware of both at the same time. I emphasize aware, because when you are aware that you're loving in part or fragmented, meaning a special person, a specific people, or so on, and not others, you are unaware that on alternate planes and alternate dimensions, you are actually loving all of them, all the same, equally, all the time, in every moment, fully and completely. So this, of course, again, is about training and recognizing beyond definitions, be forgiving, right? letting go of the ability to discern between differences, and recognizing everything is this. Everything is this. Essentially, the last lesson to learn here is that all is one in the same. Let's make this year different. And making it all the same. Love that one. 
Hallelujah. Have a beautiful, miraculous day. Mm -hmm. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Behind the scenes, one second here. So I'm still recording because I feel like this is going to get somewhere. We're going to have something to say here. You guys are texting in like crazy. And let's see what you say. <clears throat> it was not different from the other. Oh, yes, okay. JJ says, Dev. Hey, JJ, do you know what Dev means in Hindu? I love that you call me that now. <laughs> it means God in Hindu. Devin means little god, like Marquito means my little Marquis. Devin is like a like a sweet little way to say, "Oh, my little god." I didn't know that. But I found that out. Dev, I believe Carla was saying that. Was what I typed above what you said that I was asking for experiences I'm experiencing. Carla is that way you meant when you when you said what I said above did not make sense. Okay, <laughs> JJ, it threw me off. It was like it came out of the blue. The, the big text, she she likes to quote me as I'm going along. I do, uh, I would like it if you separated it a little bit. But at the same time, it's, it's all good. I have decided I'm going to adjust my screen so I can see more chat. And stepping away from this little guy here. Hmm... If someone cheats on you, you are no longer in element with each other alignment with each other so is essence move to hell on omg i now know why i feel hatred is because i have been associating love with sex not really knowing what love truly is yeah it's really the closest thing that we uh, as in physical expression have to this idea of love, but in itself is not love. Uh, I mean, specifically. It's not like specifically love as what love is. <laughs> I'm going to do that. There we go. Uh, but do I have to love my father and pimps and uh, customers for s sexually abusing me? I don't think so. <laughs> this God love thing is quite honestly quite foreign to me. <laughs> I mean nothing by the humming, I'm just saying, agreeing, yes. Hey, I think I've got it. I'm... If I'm not loving you, how can I say I love my daughter or and or grandchildren? That's pretty simple to use a, a barometer as to if I'm in love or in fear. It is true. All is one and the same. Is saying that I love you is saying I care about you? 
And yeah, in a way, I would I would say it means more I care about you than it actually is referring to actual love. Um, definitely in my sense of whom I've loved, and I say it to my kids and my my wife all the time, and it definitely does, and it's more so on this establishment, yeah, I care about you, yeah, I'm thinking about you, I you know, enjoy your company and your life and all this stuff. But uh, as far as, yes, that is very special love. It is a bodily thing. Uh, it, it resides on the fact that we have bodies. This music's getting low. Like I talking to her as a body, loving a body, saying I care about you is specifically a body. And that is definitely an association, of course, to the third dimensional reality and the ego consciousness, which is the fourth dimension. No, I don't know what dev means. Am I incapable of love because I am confused too? Uh, Carla, you might be impatient, um, but you are fully capable of understanding it eventually. It, there, it's more like you're learning a new language. Uh, you, you don't got the gift of tongues, so we're not trying to do it overnight or in two months. It sometimes takes years, all right? This is a new language, and in a way, a love language. We all have our different ways of communicating and how we understand these things in every sense. So even how we understand love. But yes, some people, as far as what compassion and care and uh, these things for another person does seem very nice, enjoyable, and loving, and I would say is in this way closer to what you are but to really recognize love is not in the sense of discerning between the difference between what is compassionate and what is angry you know it's actually seeing them both the same and that's real love is is recognizing that same presence of love for this angry madness as much as same presence of love for this compassion and caring that even while it might be more enjoyable and they might turn into saints and all this great stuff, uh, to actually recognize that love is the source of all being and all experiences, regardless of what they are. This is bringing up issues of sexual trauma in my life. Well, you're bringing up sexual issues of trauma in your life, but this discussion might be... Uh, associating the idea of those things to to you and with you nothing wrong with that and uh, you might want to stop classifying it as trauma because how else are you going to see it in a different way if you keep insisting that it is and was traumatic This is a nice romantic place for our love. I notice uh, we didn't listen to the lesson again, did we? I love you, Father, and I love your Son. My gratitude permits my love to be accepted without fear, and thus am restored to my reality at last. All that intruded on my holy sight, forgiveness takes away. And I draw near to, near the end of senseless journeys, mad careers, and artificial values. I accept instead what God establishes as mine, sure that in lo- in that lo- in that alone, <laughs> I will be saved. Sure that I go through fear to meet my love, Father. I come to you today because I would not follow any way but yours. You are beside me, certain in your your way, and I am grateful for your holy gifts of certain sanctuary 
and escape from everything that would obscure my love for God, my Father, and His Holy Son. I like it too. What else do you call it? Um, maybe just experience. Well, with my sexual experience, I believe this, which many would agree with your choice of believing, and especially believing that it's a tra trauma. But I, I won't. Um, I don't believe anything has to be a trauma. It's only a trauma when you resist it. It's only difficulty when you don't like it, don't agree with it, and so on. Which, in many cases, is plausible. More likely, right? But it is not required. Definitely not required. It's more so if you uh, choose that, then it will seem to be. Now is the best opportunity for comments and questions. I'm exporting this file, and we'll get to those in just a moment. Learn more about this course I'm recording at openandclear.com. differently this idea that there's got to be a better way there's got to be a better way all right ladies and gentlemen Our time is coming to a close. <laughs> Just take a position more so like, I know more than I think I know. Or I know more than I believe I know. And for a while there would be somewhat of a trust factor. But... Uh, you can definitely recognize the knowledge just as easily to the extent in which you really are willing to do so. So it's pretty exciting. Thank you for being here. <laughs> these are, this music is uh, a guy that offers free music copyright free music that he makes I don't have the patience to make some myself but I could maybe I should make some flute music huh? I'm actually a saxophone player and I just don't have a saxophone if I got a saxophone she can get a soprano for like 250 Play some cool sexy saxophone music. <laughs> Assuming I still can. Alright. Goodbye. Have a beautiful day.